In this video you will learn how to create and use standalone components inside Angular. And actually starting from Angular 15 we have such thing which is called standalone components, which essentially means that we should not create a module every single time when we need to create a component. Actually we simply move all properties from the module to the component. This is why here I want to refactor Angular project to the usage of standalone components. And first of all here I will write all my commands with npx-p angular CLI 15. This is a really nice possibility to use CLI of specific version. And the first thing that I want to do is generate new component but with a special attribute standalone. This is why here we can write ng generate component and let's name it foo. And after this we are writing minus minus standalone. I'm hitting here enter and as you can see we are not getting here a module like it was previously. Before if you are generating a component it will create for you also a module. But here we have just component foo with html, css and ts. Let's look on this module. As you can see here is this module and we are interested in ts file. And here it is already looking different. First of all we have here standalone true. This is exactly what we must write starting from Angular 15 if we want a standalone component. Additionally we never saw imports inside the component. Essentially now it looks like we are writing not a component but a mix of component and module. Which means if you want to use some component of another module inside this component foo then we need to import it here. How we can do that? In order to check this I want to generate one more component which will be bar and it is also standalone. Now here inside our foo component after common module we can write bar but we are not injecting bar module like we typically did previously we are injecting here bar component because essentially this is component module or standalone component. What this code allows us to do is render bar inside our foo. This is why here I am writing app bar and here I am closing app bar. But as you can see nothing is being rendered inside our markup because we didn't register our foo component inside our app module and we didn't render it. This is why here we must jump back inside our app module and here inside imports we are registering our foo component. And now we can jump inside app component html and render here our app foo component. Let's check if it's working. As you can see in browser we are getting foo works and bar works, which actually means now we registered two standalone components and rendered them and we didn't need to create a module for any of this component. The next question that you for sure have how we can lazy load our foo component because previously essentially we lazy loaded modules. In order to do that I want to jump inside our app routing and here we have our routes. Now here we can register a new route with path for example foo and here we must provide load component and this is a function and we are writing here an import just like we did previously. So here is our foo folder but here now we are not choosing module but foo component. And after this import we must write then and we are getting here the module because essentially this is a module where we must use module.foo component. Let's check if it's working. I am jumping here and in the router I am writing slash foo. And as you can see now this code is duplicated because this component foo is already rendered inside the component and this is rendered inside our outlet. Which essentially means this is how we are registering our standalone components when we need to lazy load them. But now let's do even more interesting stuff. We have our app component, it is still working, but we can do it also standalone. This is why here what I want to do is write standalone true and this is it. But now I really want to do the worst thing possible. I want to completely remove app module TS because as we said we don't want to use modules anymore. I completely remove app module and now we can jump inside main TS and use our standalone app component here. So we don't need all this code anymore because we will create our application differently. And for this we have a new thing which is called bootstrap application and here we are passing our root component. In our case it is an app component. Let's check if it's working. 
As you can see in browser where getting app foo is not known angular element and this is completely logical because we completely remove our app module and now we are trying to render our app component. What we need to do here, we must register our module, which we want to use inside app component. This is why here we are writing imports, and here is our full component that we want to render. As you can see, this error is gone, but now we have another error, router outlet is not known element. And essentially, we must do exactly the same, we must import here router outlet as a module. This error is already gone and now full works, bar works were successfully rendered here inside our markup. But actually we are here on slash foo and as you saw previously, we rendered twice foo works bar works because we were inside router outlet. This is not working anymore. Why is that? Because actually here we previously used our app routing module and we don't have modules anymore. And actually what I can do here, I want just to export our routes because we want to use them. But actually this module we won't use at all. Now we must jump back inside our main TS. Essentially this is the alternative for our app module. And here as a second parameter we must provide an object with field providers. And here we want to register provide router. And inside we are passing routes, so essentially these routes are coming from app routing module and this is not a module, this is just an array. But actually here I made an error that a lot of people are doing. We didn't write here inside providers an array, we simply assigned here provide router. And this is not correct because providers is an array. This is why we must wrap our provide router because later we will add more providers here. And this is exactly how we register our routes inside our standalone application. As you can see now it is rendered correctly. And the last thing that I want to show you is how we can use links. Because essentially we want to create some links and jump between them. This is why typically we are creating a router link and let's say that it is going on slash full page. So inside I will render full text. The main problem is, as you can see in browser, this is not a link, it is not highlighted and this directive is not working. And in order to fix that, we must jump inside our app component and add here router link as an import. In this case here, as you can see, it is working just like before. And actually, if you are interested to know what is injection token inside Angular and how it works, make sure to check this video also.